Hey, welcome back, everyone, to another exciting episode of Primetime News. We have a lot of stuff to go over today, as usual, but we're going to start things off with a story that is very serious and very important for the reselling community to pay attention to. All right, so as many of you know, there is a significant shortage of baby formula here in the United States. And as of this article that was posted yesterday, babies are now becoming hospitalized as this formula shortage grows more and more dire. Now, let me be clear that the underlying cause of all this is the FDA shutting down the Abbott Nutrition Facility without an adequate replacement plan, which is a big problem because there's not a lot of companies in the United States that produce baby formula. So when you shut down one of the major producers and don't have that replacement plan in place, you are going to have a shortage. Now, as of the last few days, there have been negotiations between the government and between Abbott to get this facility back online. But even if it goes back online to produce baby formula in the next one or two weeks, it's still going to take a couple of months for that formula to hit the shelves. And the shelves is where our story brings us to next. We are going to scroll down a little bit because you can see here it says video of suspected baby formula scalper, which is a you know derogatory term that's used towards resellers, clearing store shelf sparks rage. So I'm going to show you this clip that has been going around not only articles like this on Newsweek, but it's also been going around uh, on mainstream uh, national newscasts, I saw this exact video clip I'm going to show you. I'm just going to show you part of it. And let me show you right now. And no. you say that you have, you have, have a limit. full car. Look at this. Look at all this. I need Look at the shelves. You don't think I need it for my baby too? You think I know you come and you get this one before? This you just you, you just cleared the one. whole shelves of all of this formula. All right, now in the rest of the video, the two women argue back and forth a little bit, and the woman who has all of this formula in her shopping cart walks off with it. Now, we don't know what happened when she got to the checkout area. It could be that they put some type of limit in place to prevent her from walking out with all this. That's what most stores are doing at this time. So hopefully that's what happened here. And that should help to curb the shortage somewhat. Well, what this video does show us is that there are people who are going out to brick and mortar stores and they are wiping the shelves clean of baby formula. Now, there's an assumption made in this article that the woman who did this is going to resell it. They don't say that that's definitively what happened, but they do raise that as a possibility. I could understand why they raise it. Now, just because of how much is there. Now, I don't care if she was buying all of this for herself and her own family. It's still way too much for any one person to be picking up in this type of emergency. I don't care if her kids are the size of baby Godzilla or baby Yui. But from a reselling perspective, it's definitely a significant problem because this would be considered price gouging. I have talked about this before, particularly I raised this topic at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. You cannot go and wipe out stores of essentials or even buy essentials uh, at any price and then go and try to significantly jack up the price during an emergency shortage. Uh, that is price gouging and you can go to jail for it and face significant fines and all sorts of stuff. If you are trying to do this on eBay, uh, you are going to get your account shut down and it could be shut down for good. Uh, for those of you who don't believe that resellers are doing this, it is happening. I mean, this is a great example right here. Just go on the eBay solds and you will see examples of it all over the place. This Enfamil infant formula, 29.4 ounces, it typically sells for half the price of this. So the price of this has been doubled. And there's many examples, one-offs I could show you of these things being sold for even higher prices and other brands uh, as well. Uh, and if you want to see how serious eBay is trying to take this now, and this is newer that you see this up here, it says eBay infant formula price gouging prohibited report listing. So they are actively encouraging people uh, to report listings of anyone uh, who is doing anything like this. So to be clear, I don't want anyone to misunderstand. I am not blaming resellers for causing this problem with the formula shortage. Uh, far from it. 
Uh, as I said in the beginning, the shortage is caused by the shutdown of this plant without an adequate replacement plan. However, what we can't have are any videos out there, any stories which show that resellers are going out and 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 doing anything involving price gouging with baby formula because we already get enough slack for doing things like wiping out store shelves of of toys or or video game consoles or ordering them up uh, and some of those things I have defended in the past when when they're not essentials but when they're essentials that's where I draw the line now if you were to sell it at the regular market value, that's okay. That's not price gouging. But personally, I'm just staying away from any of this type of stuff, just like I did during the pandemic. There's so much other stuff out there to resell. I don't even want to get anywhere near this. I don't want to get near with a 10-foot pole. So I am staying away. You will not see any baby formula in my store. Now, if you happen to see some baby formula in the store and you could pick it up at a regular price and you could give it to a family member or give it to a neighbor in need at that price, have them pay you back or comp them, you know, just, just give it to them, give them a deal, give it to them half off, do someone a favor. We're doing that for some family members. We saw two, um, uh, two cans of baby formula for family members in New Jersey because there's a shortage there. So we picked up two cans. We didn't wipe out the section. We picked up two cans and we're literally just giving it to them. We're not even having them pay us for it. Um, so do stuff like that, not jacking up the price two times, three times or more. And if you're wondering, in most states, price gouging is defined as increasing the price by 10% or more during a declared emergency. But you have to check with your state laws on that. So uh, let me know in the comment section what you think of all this. All right, now, as I've mentioned in prior news broadcasts, USPS is significantly jacking up the price of postage, and there is no end in sight to that. That's why I've also mentioned that it's very important to look at alternate shipping carriers and alternate places online where you can purchase your postage. One of those places is Pirate Ship. Now, this is not a sponsored uh, statement in any way. I genuinely use Pirate Ship sometimes, and I like it. And sometimes it does provide a nice discount off of what the price is on eBay. Not always, but sometimes it does. Well, what they announced this week is that they now have new rates available to them that they could offer and pass on to customers that will give you a significant discount sometimes compared to what even the commercial pricing uh, is. So uh, an example that they gave here is that if you were shipping a two pound priority box with priority mail from Los Angeles, California to Texas with regular commercial rate pricing, that package would cost you $10.96. Now, retail pricing for it would have been $12.65. But with this new rate, um, it's just going to cost you $9.94, which is a full dollar and two cents uh, cheaper off of the commercial price. And obviously, uh, more of a discount compared to the retail pricing. So check it out as an option. This only applies to priority mail, though, not the other uh, mail services. We interrupt this program, everyone, with a brief announcement. If you are a fan of this broadcast and this channel, remember you can support it by joining channel membership. All you got to do is click this button right over here and you can explore all the different levels and perks available to you. I hope to see you as a channel member. Now let's get on to the next story. All right, I can't even believe I'm going to report on this eBay story here because what they're quoted as saying here is just so crazy. It's mind boggling. But as I reported recently in a seller update, eBay said that they are going to move listings in some areas to new categories. Now, what are those categories? Those categories are business and industrial sinks, collectibles and toys, that's pretty broad, electronics, cameras, health and beauty, COVID tests, home and garden, another broad one, parts and accessories, wheels and tires, sporting goods, golf and cycling, and watches, also another broad one. Those changes started rolling out as of May 18th. And eBay is letting people know they need to go and check your listings to make sure that everything looks okay. You might need to make some edits. You might need to change product attributes, item specifics, those types of things. But what they're quoted here is saying is the most crazy thing to me. It says, quote, during this transition, your listing experience, I love that term, listing experience, it's such a corporate term, could be 
temporarily impacted, as well as the visibility of your listings. You may notice some item specifics changing names, listings move to different categories, or some listings temporarily not appearing in searches. What? What? Now, the other things I could understand to a degree, but never should they roll this change out where your listings will literally not appear in search. Now, maybe you could even understand it if you're if you're saying to yourself, well, okay, maybe we'll rationalize it that the moment they make the change, maybe it's not available in search for like a couple minutes, right? Like, okay, we get that. Maybe we get that. But it says any affected listings should return to normal within a week though some effects to listings, visibility, and searches may continue up to three weeks. We understand these updates will take extra time and may cause some frustration, but our goal is to help you increase your listings, visibility, and sales. Only eBay would attempt to increase your listings, visibility, and sales by making your listings invisible for three weeks. What? <laughs> All right, now this next piece is news, but it's also partly an opinion piece by Ina Steiner who runs e-commerce bites. Uh, obviously, you should check out e-commerce bites. I use a lot of their uh, news material for sourcing uh, for these videos. Uh, so uh, what you can see here that she reported is that uh, eBay has ended their weekly chat. And this is a place where sellers and buyers could go to ask any question that they want and it helped people get a pulse on what's going on in the community. Well, they're ending it. And what are they replacing it with? Another buzzword that I can't stand. They're replacing it with a guided chat, a guided chat. And that's only going to be once a month. I love these terms, guided chat. So how about we use the term controlling talk or controlling chat? Because that's basically what happens. It's just going to be on a specific topic and that's it. And you could only ask questions about that one topic. So gone are the days where you could just go into one of these things each week and just ask whatever uh, question that you want to. So uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, and I've talked about uh, ad nauseum for years uh, on my own channel that eBay needs to improve communication. And in my opinion, what they just did here is they worsened it yet again. All right, now it's time for the primetime crime stories. As I've talked about in prior newscasts, it's really risky to put your envelopes or packages inside of those blue USPS collection boxes because they're often the target of thieves who break into them. So I've advised just not to put anything in them at all. But now things have become even crazier because instead of breaking into them just with brute force or, you know, stealing a key from a postal worker and getting into them that way. Let me show you the new way that they're stealing uh, mail from these boxes by literally taking the entire blue box itself. We know that all mail was removed from this mailbox May 4th at 1135 in the morning. Look at that. So if you did use this <laughs> mailbox after that time, you it's need gone. to call Multnomah County Elections to check the status of your ballot or you can track it online. Any voter whose ballot was not received at the elections office can request a replacement ballot online, or you can call the Multnomah County Elections Office at 503-988-VOTE. USPS says they are aware of the stolen mailbox and say they're replacing it. They said in a statement in part, quote, this theft happened after the mail had already been collected for the day. We have requested the involvement of the Postal Inspection Service in locating the missing box and its contents. Wow, that is just crazy. Uh, just further reinforces, I am never, ever using those boxes anymore. All right, now in another crazy case of fraud by a USPS worker against USPS, a woman was just sentenced to one year and three months in federal prison and ordered to pay back $30,000 in restitution for fraudulent travel claims that you know, she said she did, but she actually didn't do. And she was using the money that she was getting from these claims to pay for things, not only for herself, but to also pay for things such as plane tickets for family members. And she would do this based on what she would get is a government issued travel card. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, I actually have right here 
inside of this envelope is a government issued travel card because I work for a hospital for the state of New York. Technically, the state of New York is my employer. And so when I travel to certain places, like to a professional conference, uh, they will give me a card that I could use to cover for some of my expenses because I'm representing the state, representing the hospital. So it says things they will cover and things they won't cover. So for example, it says here it will cover hotel. It will cover airfare if I use a certain booking company. Uh, baggage is paid out of pocket. It will cover car rental if I use enterprise, but gas is paid out of pocket. It will cover train tickets, but all other expenses are paid out of pocket. So you better believe when I use this, I will only use it for the things that it says and will not use it for the things that it doesn't say. But what happens in a lot of instances is people get cards like this and they just think that the organization that they work for, whether it's public or private, just won't check and they won't catch on to it because they think it just, the system's just too big. And that's largely the case in many instances in the beginning. But what happens is that people, they already take a little risk. They don't get caught. They take another risk. They take bigger risks. And eventually what happens is they get caught. People start to notice. So it's just not worth it. Uh, you don't want to spend any time in prison and have to deal with any one of these fines. So just go about things the honest way. Now, speaking of hospitals and healthcare, you know, this next story is a good reminder that reseller fraud could happen anywhere. Uh, doctors do it too. And this is a great example. A New York doctor admitted to buying and selling oncology medication for profit. So this is cancer medicine. So it's one of the lowest of the low things to do. What this person was doing was getting this cancer medication and he was writing on the forms that he needed to order this medication, that he would not resell it, that he was only going to be using it for his patients. And then what he was doing is he was literally flipping it like you would do in a reselling deal to uh, wholesalers who would then go and then they would flip it to other people who you know didn't have any legal right to get this medication. And so all of that obviously is fraud. Uh, this doctor is going to face uh, some significant jail time as well as up to a $10,000 fine. Just goes to show this stuff happens all over the place. Now, in another story that we're going to have to look out for to get updates because this is just starting to develop, uh, USPS is being accused of illegally prioritizing Amazon packages. Now, there are people probably watching this broadcast who will confirm, who work for USPS, who realize that USPS is likely doing this. Many people will say that they are. Uh, and actually, it might even be something that's written into the contract. The problem is that the contract itself could be illegal because uh, USPS has an obligation by the law not to illegally discriminate between uh, users of the mail. So if you're getting mail from a non-Amazon source versus an Amazon source, they're both supposed to be treated equally under the law. So uh, there's an organization called the uh, Strategic Organizing Center that is uh, looking into this right now. And uh, they have filed uh, with the Postal Regulatory Committee to request that the details of this deal that USPS has with Amazon uh, be given to them so that they could look this over more. And uh, we'll see what happens uh, from there. But uh, right now we're at the allegation stage. All right. Now, earlier I talked to you about some things that eBay did that I find annoying, but I do try to balance that with some things that eBay is trying to do that is cutting edge. So one of the things that they're doing is they're opening uh, their first ever sneaker store that rewards people for wearing their sneakers outside of the store. This is something that uh, sneaker heads uh, like to do sometimes. They're so excited about their sneakers, they literally want to walk out with it. And all of us have probably had an experience like that with something that we bought that we want to wear it out. It's so cool. We just want to wear it out. So um, it's a neat concept, and they're literally calling it the wear them out store. You could see a picture of it uh, right over here. This is in Los Angeles. Uh, I don't think there's going to be too many other of these stores popping up. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. It's probably just a 
you know, uh, like a one-off, but it's still an interesting thing that they're doing to try to, you know, get some more roots in with the uh, sneaker community because there is a lot of money uh, into that. And so, you know, they're just trying to uh, branch out more towards that. So I think that's good. It's good for, for eBay to do that. It makes them look, you know, cooler and they need to really make inroads with the younger generation. We've talked about that for a while. So good job on that one. All right, now speaking of making inroads with the younger generation, eBay is collaborating now with Snapchat to make it easier to shop snaps. If you're not familiar with Snapchat, it's something that's more used with teenagers and you know people in their 20s to send messages to each other that are mostly visual, and then these messages just disappear. Uh, you know, it's pretty cool. I actually have a Snapchat account. My daughter set me up on one uh, a couple of months ago. I only use it to uh, collaborate with her. My son is still horrified that I actually have one right now. Uh, you know what it's like, right? When your parents try to, you know, do anything that gets more into your generation's type of stuff, it's kind of like stay away. Uh, so uh, we'll see. Maybe one day he'll, uh, he'll have me on his account. But uh, whether I actually start using it to send out snaps to potential customers, I'm not at that point yet. I don't know. We'll have to see how this evolves. But, you know, it, it is cool. I mean, it's something, again, new, cutting edge, and they're trying to reach out to the younger generation, all of which I think is good. All right. Now, in our next story, which is also an attempt by eBay to get in with the younger crowd and to be more cutting edge, uh, they have teamed up with the company that produces the TV show Love Island. Now, I have to admit, I don't watch Love Island. This is a show in England. Maybe some people watching this uh watch it. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. But basically what this is going to allow for is that if you download the official Love Island app, yes, there is such a thing. There's going to be a tab there where you could search for pre-owned clothes like the people are wearing in the actual show. So they're going to have people in the show who are wearing pre-owned clothes that they got from eBay. And if you want to get something similar, then you can go on the app and get this type of stuff. You know, I don't know how much that's going to be in terms of an influence for people, but at least it puts eBay's name out there and in, in, in front of more and more people. Uh, I, I doubt it'll have a huge significant impact, but still at least eBay's making an effort. So I will give them a little credit trying to hook up with Love Island. Uh, no pun intended there. All right, let's move on. <laughs> All right, and an important update for Etsy users, make sure that you look through your items now and how you put things in the description, how you word things, because now uh, Etsy is not only searching the title, it's also searching the description section to get information to pull from to match people closer to an item that they want. Uh, also remember that on eBay, if you go to the advanced tab, you could choose to search things by description as well as title and that there are uh, buyers out there who will search like that. So uh, my personal recommendation is to include some relevant information and keywords in your description. I say that because I know there are some people who really don't put anything in the description section at all even. Uh, so it is worth it putting it in there, not only on Etsy. <laughs> why, why did I call it Etsy? <laughs> it's, it's, it's Etsy. 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 So it's, it's worth doing it on Etsy and also on eBay. All right. In our inspirational story of the week, we once again have FedEx coming through for an awesome story. I have mentioned this many times in the past that if there is ever an emergency going on, I am calling FedEx because their workers seem to know what to do to save people in all sorts of situations, including once again, actually saving someone from a fire. Let's see what happened in this story. Check out what this FedEx guy did. All right, see that? See the fire right there? See that fire? Said your fence is on fire. Yeah, so as it says here, this guy, by doing that, he saved multiple houses from going up in flames. Uh, huge congrats to this guy. We don't know his name, but uh, he definitely gets our citizen hero of the week.
All right, everyone. Well, that does it for another exciting episode of Primetime News. Uh, make sure you leave your comments down below. I always look forward to reading them. Even though I can't always respond to every single one, uh, rest assured, I do read all of them. Uh, until then, everyone, I will see you back at the next one. Take care.